Hello everybody and welcome to part 34 of Kerbal Space Programme. The journey continues. We start in space with our probe, the Juno, our gravity probe, which after its survey of the dual system and uh, after nearly five in-game years is finally approaching Kerbin and the end of its long, long mission. We're about 70 days out from our encounter, which once again is about the perfect time for us to check in and see if we need to perform some kind of correction manoeuvre. We will need to perform some kind of correction manoeuvre. So we uh, we switch to map view and see how things are stacking up for our Kerbin periapsis as things stand. It's not looking too bad. Uh, we're coming in on the right side of Kerbin. Uh, we just need a little bit of a tweak to make sure that our uh, orbital inclination doesn't end up being too big. Um, but that's about it. We, uh, we plan that out. It ends up being a burn of a little over 50 metres per second, which is barely anything in the scheme of things, although uh, this craft doesn't have a lot of thrust on it, so uh, that does factor in here. We get the probe lined up, we wait for a suitable time, and then we fire up that Candle nuclear engine, one of the uh, one of the additional nuclear engines which comes with the KSP Interstellar mod. And yeah, this thing really does not have a lot of thrust. I've forgotten just how little it has. And uh, it's starting to make me a little bit worried about our orbital insertion burn once we, uh, we get closer to Kerbin, but we'll uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. The burn itself doesn't take quite as long as the burn time indicator had predicted, which is a positive sign, and... Uh, once we finish that burn, we switch to the map view and try to work out exactly what the bad news is once we do get closer to our Kerbin periapsis. I play about with a manoeuvre node and whichever way we cut it, it's going to take the best part of 2,400 metres per second just to get into some kind of orbit around Kerbin, which the burn time indicator seems to be predicting at about three hours. It won't be that much, but still long enough to make it a little bit problematic. Anyway, we start to follow the probe in as it approaches Kerbin. Uh, I've deliberately set the periapsis quite far away from Kerbin, which uh, should save us some delta-v on the initial burn. It will mean our approach is a little bit less fuel efficient, but uh, we've got the delta-v to throw at the problem, so uh, we're going to do that. I'm not going to bother setting up a manoeuvre node for this. There's not really much point with a burn this long. I'm just going to get to about an hour and a half before our periapsis and uh, start burning retrograde. And... Boy, this was a long one. Uh, thank God for the fact that in recent versions of KSP, you can actually time accelerate with your engines going. Um, the burn goes well, though, and after all of that, we do find ourselves in a nice and reasonably circular orbit. Uh, I do perform a slight plane change here just to bring down our orbital inclination. Um, we didn't really need to do that. It was low enough as it was, but, um, well, it's sort of force of habit by this point. From here we can start to burn down our orbit. I'm going for a final orbital altitude of uh, a little under 200 kilometers, say 190, 180, something like that. I'm not too fussed with this one, which um, does make something of a refreshing change, I'll admit. This was another long drawn out process, just with how little thrust we have at our disposal. Uh, we lower our orbit, first of all, down to about a thousand kilometers, then 500, and then to our final orbital altitude of about 177 kilometers, which is where we'll leave it. It's a nice orbit. It will be uh, very easy to reach for whichever vehicle we send up to collect the science from it. Before we get to that, though, we've got a little bit of housekeeping to take care of, and so we find ourselves here in deeper space with our interplanetary craft, the Ptolemy. Our ship, along with its crew of Kurdard, Donfoot, Bargel, and Jolly Kerman, is about 60 days away from its encounter with Drez, so for the second time this episode, it's time for us to check in with this craft and see if it needs a correction manoeuvre, and obviously it will need a correction manoeuvre. We switch to map view, we uh, set up our manoeuvre node and start tweaking things. Uh, as we've raised our orbit to reach Drez, Drez will be travelling faster than us as we encounter it, so we uh, we need to make sure we're coming in on the Kerbal side of the planet to make sure we end up travelling the right way around it. Um, unlike some of our other missions, we are going to come straight in at the altitude at which I want to start doing some science, though. Uh, Drez is a relatively low-gravity planet. We shouldn't have to burn for too long, and that will, uh, that will be the most fuel-efficient course of action overall. Having planned all of that, we, uh, we get the ship lined up. The burn itself is relatively trivial, only about 17 metres per second, so we, uh, we burn through most of that with our main engines, and then just fine-tune it with our RCS thrusters. So with that manoeuvre completed, the Ptolemy is set up for its encounter with Drez, which, as I said, will take place in about 60 days' time. And I'm sure our crew is looking forward to it after their very long journey. Um, so with that piece of housekeeping done, we've got, uh, we've got one more to take care of a little closer to home. 
And so, to tie up this last little loose end, we find ourselves here, in orbit above Kerbin, with our space station, the Socrates. All this fast-forwarding, all this time acceleration has filled our science lab up once again, so as per usual, we're going to get that transmitting back down to Kerbin, make sure the uh, science lab is stocked with fresh science experiments, um, you know the stuff. We do have a very healthy stock of science experiments for the lab at the moment, uh, almost too healthy. This could, uh, this could keep us going for a very long time. Uh, I mean, the way I'm doing things at the moment doesn't really affect our science overall because we take two sets of readings on every expedition, so uh, we do get a full set to take back to Kerbin anyway, but uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to get through all of that anytime soon. So with those distractions out of the way, it is time for us to turn our attention back to our probe, the Juno, and all the gravity data it has harvested from around Jewel and its moons. We don't want that to just sit there in orbit, so uh, we have launched our space plane from the KSC. Tommel and Bob Kerman have hopped aboard, hopefully to see this one through to a successful conclusion. We're not going to be messing about with this one, we're just going to be going up, grabbing the science package off of the front of the probe and bringing it back down to the KSC. Uh, we're not going to bother taking it to the space station because, uh, as we've just seen, that has more than enough experiments to be going on with and it's not going to be too long before it receives even more. Following on from what I was saying last episode about uh, getting this craft into orbit, we're not doing anything fancy during this ascent, we're not trying anything new or experimenting, we're just, uh, we're just going for a bog-standard vanilla climb, and um, it's not a perfect journey into orbit, but uh, we do get there with roughly the 2,200 metres per second of delta V remaining that we would expect. Uh, something else I was mentioning last episode is that it feels a bit weird to be doing ordinary launches from the KSC again after spending quite a lot of the more recent episodes just in space and landing on planets and stuff. And I was thinking about this and I think we've only got one more launch we need to do from the KSC this series after this one, of course, which is uh, kind of a weird thought. But yeah, there you go, hurtling towards the end of this one now. Anyway, we arrive at the Juno, ready to extract that science package. Uh, we open up the cargo bay, we uh, extend the little robotic arm which is going to help us fetch our cargo, and we start to get everything into place. Uh, the Juno doesn't have any manoeuvring thrusters on it, so we just have to get that orientated uh, in the correct direction, and then, uh, and then just manoeuvre the shuttle to meet it. I have a bit of a debate with myself as to whether or not to leave the probe with any additional fuel. Uh, I mean, it's got plenty. We're... We're probably not going to be using it for much, but in the end I decide, well, let's play it safe. Let's give it a little bit extra. And uh, with that done, we detach, we stow that science package safely in our cargo bay, and we can start to make our way back down towards the KSC. We get a good descent. Uh, we're a little bit heavier than we usually are when we return from one of these missions, so we, uh, we overshoot the KSC a little bit, but it's not a problem. We just get ourselves turned around, we kick in with those rapier engines in air breathing mode, and we make our way back to the KSC, where we land on the runway safely with, uh, with about two and a half thousand points worth of science to show for our troubles. With all of our Kerbin-bound antics out of the way, it's time for us to rejoin the Ptolemy, now 54 days away from its Drez encounter. Time acceleration takes care of that remaining period, though, and we quickly find ourselves within Drez's sphere of influence, ready to begin planning our orbital insertion burn. Where we're coming in quite close to Drez, I'm expecting this to be a reasonably long one, although, as I've mentioned with Drez's low gravity, it won't be anywhere near as bad as it would have been had we tried something similar around EVE, for example. The burn itself comes in at a little under 2,000 metres per second, which is roughly what I was expecting, so we, uh, we get the Ptolemy lined up, we await the appropriate moment, and we fire up those main engines. The burn time indicator was once again being of absolutely no help. Um, it was showing a massive overestimate of how long this burn would take. It was showing 48 minutes. I guessed that it was roughly half of that, so I burned about 12 minutes away from the maneuver node. It turns out even that was too much. I probably should have burned about eight minutes away. Um, it all gets a bit stop-start towards the end of this, but eventually we do find ourselves in a nice, reasonably circular orbit at about 190 kilometers in altitude. Next up, I want to perform a plane change uh, to reduce our orbital inclination as much as is possible. Uh, it's not necessary for this mission, but it will help when it comes time to uh, plan our journey back to Kerbin. And we're travelling pretty slowly, so it's going to be fairly cheap on the fuel as well. 
Without any easy frames of reference close to Drez, uh, I just have to eyeball this. It takes us a few orbits, just a few little manoeuvres, but eventually we get into an orbit I'm happy with, and we can proceed to the next stage of the mission. That next order of business, then, is to start grabbing what we came here to grab, namely science. We, uh, we crack open that science bay, we take our first set of readings whilst in space high over Drez, using our various experiments, the, uh, the mystery goo container, the materials lab, the uh, thermometer, the barometer, the magnetometer, and uh, last but not least, of course, the negative gravioli detector. We'll need two sets of everything, so Johnny Kerman has to pop out intermittently to uh, reset things and shuffle stuff around, but uh, eventually we get that first set of readings, and now we're on to a quick gravity sweep of Drez. This is the tedious bit to play through. We've got to uh, orbit round the planet, not using too much time acceleration, and uh, once we encounter a new biome, drop out of time acceleration, take two sets of readings, and then proceed further round the planet. Uh, eventually, we do make it all the way round, having encountered all six biomes that we're going to encounter, and it is time for us to, uh, to drop our orbit and start with a fresh set of readings, this time in space low over Drez. Having dropped our orbit to a little under 25 kilometers, uh, that being the boundary between space low and space high around Drez, uh, we just repeat exactly what we've just done, although irritatingly, this time we are restricted to a maximum of 10 times time acceleration, which uh, kind of prolongs this a little bit. But eventually we do get everything we can get in orbit, all of those science readings, so it is time for us to start thinking about maybe putting some boots on the ground. Kerdard Kerman was the first to set foot on Ike, so now Donfoot takes his turn to be the first on a brave new world. He transfers across to the lander and is joined by our engineer Bargel and our scientist Johnny. We detach the lander, we open up a bit of separation, we burn our orbit down to about 10 kilometers from where we are going to uh, stage our landings, and uh, given that this is the first time on a brave new world, once again we are going to switch to doing this with some live commentary. So here we go then for what will probably be the last time this series. Um, I can't say for definite it'll be the last live segment, but we're not landing anywhere else. So, um, as I said, probably. Uh, where do we want to come down? Let's take a look. We're, yeah, we need to get on with this quickly because we're approaching the day side. Um, although it's quite bumpy, quite a low gravity planet, we should be able to come in pretty steeply and not really use up that much fuel. I Fancy giving that little knobbly bit there a go. Let's just start burning uh, our periapsis down then. Gently does it. Keep going, keep going. How does that look there? Yeah, I reckon that looks good. And we should be able to uh, to stop ourselves before we get there. Let's uh, start time accelerating round a bit. Oh, time ex cannot warp faster than one times when below 10,000. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, we'll enjoy what will probably be a quite heavily edited journey down to the surface of Drez. Uh, oh, I didn't know they had a little canyon there. I'm not sure if that's a specific biome. I'm not sure if this place will be illuminated as we come around next time, but uh, maybe if it is, possibly take a look at that. We'll have to see. Here comes the sun, do 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 do. Here comes the sun, and I say, Christ, I'm bored, do 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 do. How much longer of this have we got to go? Um, when do we fly over this thing? Nearly seven minutes' time. Joy unrelenting. I was thinking where Drez is quite a low gravity planet and it shouldn't take us much fuel to get down to the surface and back up again, that we could probably make quite a few trips down to get quite a lot of science. Um, I was thinking maybe three or four, but if they're all going to take this this long to land, I think I might give that a bit of a pass. Although, as I said, with the fuel situation being reasonably decent on the way down and up. Maybe we could come in even more steeply through than this, start a bit higher. That should trim the time down a little bit. We'll have to see. I'll, uh, I'll see how much my patience can bear. That'll probably all be next episode anyway. Quite a, quite a rocky, bumpy surface there. I'm, um, I'm not sure what that's going to mean for actually landing. It doesn't look like there's many Nice little flat plateaus for us to set down on, so may have to do a bit of a bit of hopping around. But uh, again, 
fuel situation is pretty good for that. No atmosphere, of course, on Dres, so our parachutes are uh, not going to be of any use to us. So we just need to make sure we get the uh, get the descent right. How are we doing? How much longer do we have now? Two minutes, about three minutes. Okay. It's not too bad. So as we pass that crater, we should be starting to look out and uh, preparing for... Uh, preparing to land. Yeah, you can see the... Um, you can see the peak of that little uh, ridge, ju ridge just there as it, uh, as it uh, crests above the horizon. So that's where we want to land. I'm hoping we do have enough height here. I haven't left myself an awful lot. It should be fine. I mean, we've got all that runoff. Um, so, yeah, we should be able to do it. <laughs> I'm getting a little nervous in case you couldn't tell. And let's just F5 this quickly. There we go. Okay, so just about to fly past the little crater and then uh, we are on our approach. I'm assuming this little light grey bit is some kind of um, um, biome, what were the biomes? Uh, it was the highlands, lowlands, midlands, obviously. Um, uh, impact craters, impact ejector, and there's the ridges. The ridges, so I'm assuming that might be something like that. There was, I swear there was another one I can't remember now. Um, regardless. Hopefully that's that's a little hard to reach biome, and if we do land successfully there, that means future missions we don't have to worry about coming down that precisely. We can just slap it down here or there or where wherever we fancy. Get the difficult one out of the way first, and uh, hopefully that will set the rest of the mission up nicely. Okay, this is coming up quicker than I thought it would. Let's drop those landing legs. We need somewhere reasonably flat. Probably over this bit there. Just past, just past this little ridge into this bit here, I reckon. We might overshoot. I don't know, they're looking pretty good. Okay, that's looking pretty decent. Yeah, it does look reasonably flat here. Let's not just uh, ram it on full throttle. Let's try and control this a bit better. Retract those solar panels just in case we make a bit of a bumpy landing. Let's bleed off a bit more speed. I want to be coming down at less than three meters per second. Closer to two if I can. And there we go. Yeah, that's all right. That'll do. We are down. Let's uh, let's extend our ladder. And let's start to accumulate our science. So let's grab a crew report from Dres's Midlands. Oh, uh, it's just the Midlands. I don't know if we crossed over a ridge biome. I'll have to uh, go back and double check the footage. Uh, but let's get Donfoot out. Donfoot Kerman, the first Kerbal to set foot on Dres. Let's get a little EVA report from you. When you look closely at the ground, you can see there are different types of deposits mixed together. Well, that A-level chemistry course obviously did you the world of good. Let's get you out. Let's check the gravity. Let's do a bit of a... Yeah, so I think we're looking at roughly moon levels of gravity. Good stuff. Let's go and plant our flag. Dres Midlands. Slightly more interest. Oop. 
slightly more interesting than Ike. That will do. Let's get everyone else out. Not you. Let's get Barjul Kerman out. And down. Down the ladder. You come. There we go. And a quick hop for you as well. And let's, of course, not forget Johnny Kerman. I think it's going to come out with a bit of style. There we go. And there are our Kerbals on the surface of Drez. I think we're going to leave it there for today. Um, we'll pick this up next time. We'll get all that science sorted and what have you. Um, but yes, I hope you've enjoyed it, everybody. If you have, please consider liking, subscribing, maybe even following me on Twitter. I will be back next time. As I said, we've got to finish all this up. We've got to get the uh, probably get the Ptolemy off back, uh, heading back home to, uh, to Kerbin as well. But um, yeah, until then, thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you next time.